I'm Joshua Bardwell, and this is video number three in my series, Black Box 101, where I teach you how to use Black Box to troubleshoot and tune your quadcopter. This is video number three in the series, and if you haven't watched videos one and two, I do strongly advise that you go back and watch them first. They build on each other, and uh, if you don't already know a lot about Black Box, diving into the middle uh, is going to really just leave you more confused than you started. There's a link to the playlist down in the video description or in the upper right. In this video, we're going to begin talking about the PIDs. And one of the major things that Blackbox does for you is let you see what your PIDs are doing and analyze whether they're doing what they really need to be doing. But if you don't understand what your PIDs are supposed to be doing, you can't assess whether they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, I could have probably said that better. So we're going to start this lesson by talking about the PIDs, and specifically we're going to start by talking about the P-term. And I'll bet I can fill a whole lesson just talking about the P-term. When we finish, you're going to know so much about the P-term. You're going to know so much about the P-term, you're going to say, please, it's too much. I know too much about the P-term. I don't want to know any more about the P-term. Works for our president, right? Should work for me, right? <laughs> I'm, I, I apologize. I don't know. In order to understand what a PID controller is doing, we have to introduce some basic concepts. And the first concept I want to introduce is the set point. And the set point is whatever you want the system to be doing, wherever you want the system to be. So if we take an example of, let's take a thermostat, and the goal of the thermostat is to control the temperature of, well, your house or a vat of chemicals or in a factory or something. And let's say that the set point is 100 degrees Celsius, or maybe the set point is 120. Whatever it is, that is what we want the system to be doing. Now in our quadcopters, the set point is the number of degrees per second of rotation. So maybe the stick is centered and the set point is zero degrees per second of rotation, or maybe the stick is fully deflected and the set point is 1,000 degrees or 1,200 degrees per second of rotation. That's the set point for our quadcopter. But set that aside for a minute. Let's just take simple examples and we'll work up to more complex ones. So we've got the set point. And then the next concept is the measurement. And the measurement is whatever the system is actually doing at this exact moment. So we've got this concept that there's this thing we want the system to be doing or a place we want the system to be at and a place where it actually is at. And the difference between those two is error. Okay, you can think about your relationship with your significant other in that sense. There's something that they want you to be doing and there's something that you are doing and the difference between them is error. <laughs> okay, the goal of a PID controller is to reduce error to zero by making the thing that's actually happening, the measurement, be the same as the set point, the thing that we want to be happening. And it does this by the P, the I, and the D term. And we're going to forget about the I and the D term, and we're just going to think about a P-only controller, which is, in fact, a thing that exists in the real world. They're not super common, but they do exist, and we'll see how that plays out. Just to add a tiny bit more of real world perspective here, the set point is controlled by the stick position, right? How much stick deflection there is, and the measurement is the gyro, which is reading out the number of degrees per second of rotation. So the gyro spits out rotation rate, the stick controls the set point, and the PID controller attempts to make the rotation rate match what the stick position is commanding. Okay. The P in P term refers to the word proportional. And that is because the p-term is directly proportional to the magnitude of the error. So we've got our set point, and we subtract the measurement from the set point, and we, that gives us the error, and p is equal to some number times the error. So as the error gets larger, the p-term grows, and as the error is smaller, the p-term shrinks. So let's take a look at a, an example of how a PID controller might work in real life. And, and for this example, we're going to use temperature because thermostat is kind of something that we can all grasp, and it's simple. It's not complicated like a quadcopter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw 
temperature on a grid or a, a graph. We're going to have temperature on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. And I'm going to use, let's say I use a red line to, uh, to represent the set point, which is the temperature that the thermostat is set to. Let's say the temperature is set to some value. And then let's say that over time, somewhere in the middle of the, of the test, we lower the thermostat to a lower value. Okay. Next, let's look at the measurement, and we'll use this blue line to represent measurement. And at the beginning, let's say that, that the measurement, that is the actual temperature in the room, is at the set point. In other words, the room is the correct temperature. No action is required. So since the set point and the measurement are the same, set point minus measurement is zero. And that means that error is zero. And since the p term is proportional to the error, the p term is also zero. We're not going to add a set. We're not going to add a separate line for, for the p term. The p term is always going to be proportional to the error. So let's say that we've got a p gain of one, which means that the p term is always one times the error, which means it's always the same as the error. Then we don't have to draw four lines. We can only draw three lines. In this moment, when we change the set point, something happens. And what happens is that the measurement stays the same because nothing has changed it, and the error goes negative. And the reason for that is that set point minus measurement is now a negative number. So now we have to introduce one more concept, and that is the concept of feedback or closed loop. And that means that the output of the PID controller is fed into some kind of a mechanism that can affect the measurement. Okay, so for example, the output of the p the p term might be fed into a blower motor or a an electric uh, heating element, and that element might get hotter or colder or whatever, <laughs> depending on the value of the p term. Let's say that you know the the p p term going positive means get hotter, and a p term going negative means get colder. Okay, so as the p term becomes non-zero, this blower motor or this heating element will kick in and will start to change the temperature in the room. So let's see what happens here. The p term has gone negative, and so that blower motor kicks in, and that means that the temperature starts falling until the temperature reaches the set point. And what the p term is going to do is, as the temperature falls, the p term, the, the error, right, the error is this space right here. The bigger this is, the bigger the p term is, and the smaller it is, the smaller it is, the p term is going to approach zero like so. Now let's take another example, and this time we are, we're we're going to think about our quadcopter. I'm going to sort of make it more real. So let's call this degrees per second rotation, and let's say that positive is left and negative is right. So if we're if the set point is at zero, the copter is being commanded to stay stationary. If the set point goes positive, the copter is being commanded to roll left. If the set point is negative, the copter is being commanded to roll right. Okay, so let's say we've got a scenario now where the set point is at zero. And the set point is going to stay at zero for the entire example. So that's not very interesting, is it? Well, hold on. Let's say at the beginning, the measurement is also zero. And therefore, yes, the error is also zero. Everything is as it should be. And let's say that there is some kind of external disturbance, something, wind, you smacked into a branch, you tried to land the copter in air mode and the arm hit the ground. Something causes the measurement to change, even though the set point hasn't changed. So we looked previously at an example where we moved the set point, you moved the stick. And then as a result of that, an error was created and the p term moved to reduce the error. Here we're going to have an example where the set point stays the same and the error is created because an external force causes the measurement to change. And what happens is that suddenly the measurement skews off. The copter has rotated left. What's the p term going to do? The p term will become negative to counteract that. And therefore the motors will spin up and cause, and cause the copter to move back the direction that it should move. 
or, or not move back the direction it should move, but to cease moving. So it will get bumped to the left and it will s stop the leftward mo motion. Because remember, uh, in acro mode, what we're dealing with is degrees per second. We're dealing with rotational rate, not absolute position. So we have no auto level that would level it back out again, but it'll stop the, the uncommanded motion. P term will go negative. The motors will begin to spin up in response to that. The measurement will be brought back to zero and the P term will correspondingly return to zero. So that's an example of an external disturbance. When you're looking at black box, one of the things that you want to be looking at with the PID, with the PID loop, and we'll go to an example in black box, maybe in the next video actually, because this one's going to get a little long. But when, one of the things you're going to look at is when the set point moves, the P term should move with the set point to cause the gyro to move with the set point. But when the gyro moves without the set point moving, the P term should move opposite of that to counteract the uncommanded motion and return the gyro or the measurement back to what the set point was. So now if we take this into the terms of black box, in black box the set point is RC command, that's your stick position, the measurement is the gyro readout and the error, actually I, you didn't used to be able to see the error directly but I think you can now, but essentially the error is, a, is the magnitude of the error is basically the P term. It's not exact because the, it's error times the P gain is the P term, but a P term is proportional to error, so you can think of it that way. When we analyze these behaviors, that's how we're going to do it. If the set point, RC command, the stick position, moves, the P term should move with it to cause the gyro, the measurement, to move with it. On the other hand, if the set point doesn't move and there is an uncommanded motion, the P term should move to oppose the motion thereby pulling the gyro back to the, what is being commanded. Okay, so this is an example of an uncommanded motion of the copter. In other words, the copter smacked into something or something smacked into the copter or the wind moved it. And this is an example of a commanded motion. And this starts to bring us to one of the ways that we troubleshoot with black box and looking at the PIDs. Um, if we've got, if the copter is doing something that we don't want it to be doing, for example, when you throttle up, the copter yaws to the left. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what the set point, what the sticks are telling the copter to do. Sometimes when you throttle up, the copter yaws to the left because you didn't realize that you're actually bumping the stick slightly to the left. In that case, we would see that the P term would push the copter to yaw left and the copter would yaw left. It's, everything is working just great. On the other hand, sometimes we would get an uncommanded motion. For example, if, if the motors don't spin up equ equally fast, then there will be some slight, you know, maybe pitch forward or pitch back or yaw left as you jam the throttle. And in that case, what we would see is the second example, the uncommanded motion example, we would see the P term fighting the gyro, and that would tell us that the reason the copter was going left was some external force that would confirm that for us. It's a very simple example, but it's one of the ways you break down. Quite often, troubleshooting what a problem with the copter amounts to answering the question, is the copter doing some, what it's being told to do, or is it doing something it's not being told to do? And this is one way we can answer that question pretty definitively, by looking at the relationship between the P-term and the gyro. There's one more concept that I want to introduce, and that is that real systems do not respond perfectly to a P-controller or a PID controller really. Real systems have mass and they have inertia. They don't spin up or spin down infinitely fast. So if we think about the case where there's a, an error is present and the P term rises to counteract the error, okay? Well, that has to go out the mixer, out the ESC, out the motor, and the prop has to spin faster or slower and that takes some amount of time. And meanwhile, things are still happening, okay? So we've always gonna have some delay between the output of the PID controller and the, the measurement. There's a, there's, a, there's a time constant there, I think is the right term for it. What that means is that, is that you can get situations like this. Let's say that the stick is centered 
and then all of a sudden, boom, you jam full left stick just as hard and fast as you can, okay? What's gonna happen is that the P term is going to rise as quickly as it can, and the actual copter is going to overshoot where it should be. And once it overshoots, the error is going to descend rapidly, okay? Oh, no, you overshot, get back there. But again, because of that delay between what the PID loop is doing in the real system, oh, it's gonna overshoot some more, and then, oh, it's gonna come back down, and it's gonna overshoot the other way. And the PID controller is gonna go, no, 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 go back that way. Is this starting to look familiar to you? You're gonna get a ringing oscillation and the reason that ringing oscillation happens is that the system can only respond so quickly because it's a real physical system subject to the constraints of space and time and mass and you know there's only so much you can do there. So if we've got a system that changes the set point very slowly or if we've got a system that is very very responsive super perfectly responsive then a P controller by itself can do quite a good job. But if you've got a system where the set point changes very quickly and the system cannot respond that quickly, and that's the system our quadcopters are, then a P term alone will result in some oscillation. Well, okay, that is gonna bring us to the end of this video. And yes, I know, we didn't look at black box at all. We just looked at me drawing graphs, but you can't understand what's going on in black box if you don't understand how a PID controller works and what it's doing. You just can't analyze the data. So we're gonna have some instructional stuff in here as well as some, some black boxy stuff. But we will get back to black box in a future video. Thank you for watching. I hope it was educational. Hope it was fun, maybe even. I don't know. Happy flying.